This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is Chris Abraham, Chris Cast slash The Chris Abraham Show. I am uh, enjoying Penrose Square Park, and um, it is awesome, and it's beautiful, and there's lots of birds. And I think that they're finally trying to get rid of the awful, awful dead animal smell from the, uh, from the switch box. This is season five, episode fourteen, uh, and I think that's catorce, and um, it is about eugenics. And I've talked, I've spoken about eugenics before, but I think it's really important to define a conversation that my best friend Mark and I have been having about eugenics. And I was recently uh, watching an episode of a series called Mrs. Davis. Is that it? It's about a nun named Simone who is the child of magicians. And during the, during the, one of the episodes they talk about um, hearts and minds, they talk about audience manipulation, they talk about that kind of thing. And there's a term called a force, um, or to force, F-O-R-C-E. And it is um, an interesting term, and I'll look it up on ChatGPT after this for the notes. But it refers to the fact that if you are a good enough magician, you can convince the crowd, or your mark, or your target, or the person who is watching you, you can easily convince them that they've made a decision of their own agency, of their own volition, of their own decision, without them ever believing that they've been nudged. Now, nudging is a different word. It's a word used by the British government, which is to say that people can't be forced, and that definition of force means to do something against your will, right? So instead of using the term force, which apparently is a, uh, either a con artist or a magical term. They've used the term nudge instead, which is to say uh, using things like reverse psychology, using psychology, using psychology as a way that you're, you have a series of false choices, of choices that you're led to believe um, because you are afraid you, for example, feel like you'll never be able to afford a house, or you'll feel like you'll never be able to afford a family, or if you could afford a family, your marriage is never going to work, or uh, you can't trust the other gender, or um, you believe that even if you had kids, they'll never go to Harvard, Duke, or Yale, or Stanford ever, unless they are exceptionally gifted or exceptionally diverse. You start believing, of your own choice, that racism is an extreme problem in America and that there are uh, racist extremists who are preparing to foment a armed, an armed rebellion, an armed coup d'etat against the government. You are led to believe that the Supreme Court is corrupt and that it is no longer a check and balance you believe that the uh, Senate is elitist. You believe that the House is not on your side currently. You believe that democracy is extremely fragile with an extremely thin skin and an extremely glass jaw. So these are false beliefs. I mean, in your day to day, you don't get mugged, you don't get shot, you don't get killed. You don't have yelling matches with people of other genders. You do not generally uh, at all uh, have any semblance of active transphobia, anti-Semitism, 
Uh, you do not have any extreme levels of, aside from maybe saying things like woke go broke or, or um, uh, snowflake or calling people sheep. Outside of that kind of thing, extremists are as cowardly as everybody else. Um, everybody's a coward. Everybody survives because of cowardice. There's a great quote somewhere that said the only survivors of history, the only survivors in history, have always been the cowards. And I, I dare say that's true. Um, the heroes don't survive. The heroes sacrifice themselves so that the cowards can live. Um, the women, children, and cowards are the ones to always survive. And they're the ones to breed. So now on to the topic at hand, which is um, a conversation that my best buddy Mark and I have all the time. And it has to do with eugenics. Now, both Mark and I believe that um, there should be not any shame associated with suicide. You should be able to commit suicide anytime you want after, you know, thinking things through. Uh, consider, you know, your family, consider your children, consider your, your spouse, consider uh, the people who will remain alive. Um, you have people who have abortions and there's no uh, shame on having an abortion like with suicide you can do it as selfishly as you want I believe in independence I believe in freedom of choice I believe in rugged individualism and people who get abortions and fight for abortion are as much individualistic as people who fight for the Second Amendment and fight for gun laws, as are the people who fight for freedom of speech. Even though you might feel like you're part of a larger community, in order to do something so selfish, you have to have a certain level of independence, you have to have a certain level of, of uh, individualism, and you have to make your choices individualistically. Now, uh, eugenics is this idea that you uh, can treat human populations like you do uh, dogs, horses, cows, sheep, goats, etc. You uh, make sure that you breed out lameness, you breed out sickness, uh, you breed out um, uh, any, any stock that isn't um, best suited for life in a, in a farm, life in a stable. You also have to um, breed out any extremism, too. I mean, if you're not... If, if you know, uh, having, a, having a, uh, an excitable passionate, uh, strong, and capricious thoroughbred or Arabian is good, uh, but having a capricious dairy cow isn't. Having a capricious bull might or might not be good, depending on how the bull is used. Having capricious goats, I don't know. Goats are pretty capricious. Having capricious sheep might make it difficult. The capricious sheep tends to be the one to uh, break up the herd, uh, disturb, uh, what is the term that everybody in um, Silicon Valley uses? Uh, they break up the herd, they peel away from the herd, they go bounding away, they cost a lot of extra resources for uh, the shepherds, for the sheep, sheep herders, for the sheep dogs. And so the capricious are necessarily as important to weed out as are the dullards or the sickly or the um, developmentally disabled and so forth, right? So, uh... So let's take that to humans, right? In the past, in Virginia, in America, in the 20s and 30s, uh, in fact, um, eugenics movements uh, hit policy. 
people who had mental illness were uh, people who uh, were of considered to be low IQ, people who were antisocial, people who um, ended up in jail or were capricious, people who had what we would call autism or spectrum disorder, or I'm sure ADHD, certainly um, things like bipolar disorder or mania or depression, uh, people who I'm sure uh, signified as uh, LGBTQIA+, people who uh, exhibited as trans, people, uh, so on and so forth, would be, if they were discovered, it could be as simple as being perceived as uppity, whatever uppity means. Anybody who does not, uh, anybody who did not um, walk or goose step, lock step in society uh, would be uh, put into prison away from you know, in, in prison in those days, in the 20s and 30s, there were no conjugal visits. Uh, locked away in prison, locked away in, in um, places like St. Elizabeth, other types of, um, of, of, of um, uh, sanitariums, sanatoriums. Uh, and even worse, they would be uh, castrated. They would be, they would have their tubes tied. They would be given castration drugs. Here comes the, uh, it's officially season for the ground-based waterfalls in our neighborhood. So that's the new background noise that's all of a sudden happened. And so these were all exertions, right? These were people all through Virginia who were, uh, her, who were removed of their ability to have children, who were castrated, celebrated. I forgot the term, oh... Uh, but this was always decisions upon them. Uh, this kind of thing, sort of, well, no, this, this kind of behavior was supported by doctors, academics, Har Harvard, Yale, etc. They believed that the polluted bloodlines and the polluted uh, blood and the polluted genes, I don't even knew, think they knew what genes were uh, in the 20s, but... In, in akin to raising chickens, raising cows, raising fowl, raising horses, raising quarter horses, you breed uh, to improve and you put down, or as they say in that word, in that world, you, um, uh, you, what's the term? Comment dire? You, you thin the herd. And, that was something that was being done very active to uh, to low IQ individuals, people who are considered crazy, mentally ill, uh, antisocial, you know, um, just anybody who was not Mary Jane. And this includes people with hyperintelligence. And this includes people of different sexualities, genders, third gender people. But it also had to do uh, with poverty, right? Um, if you were impoverished, you didn't have a lot of agency, and these procedures could be done to you. In, in a modern world, in a, in a world of um, IUDs, in a world of, of hormonal therapies, in a world of the pill and so forth, uh, a lot of this is turned around. And, and while the eugenics movement directly resulted in the seven million dead Jews and seven, you know, including um, um, uh, travelers and uh, um, gypsies now called Romani and um, poor, the poor, the, uh, the term that they used then was people with develop we we would say developmental disabilities um, anybody who needs a caretaker anybody who um, anybody who has um, any type of uh, I mean the medicine wasn't there to keep people with um, diabetes or or cancer or anything like that there was no way of keeping uh, people those people alive 
Um, but I assume it would include people with, uh, with dementia, anybody who is too difficult to take care of and who uh, wouldn't result in money from families or the estate would be, um, would be removed from the gene pool as quickly and as silently and as quietly as possible and as legitimately it was not it was considered humane right in many cases uh, the world has come full circle and now instead of opt out eugenics where you need to find a lawyer and find a way to keep from being uh, either euthanized or um, uh, made uh, made fallow or made impotent or made, not impotent, impotent's the wrong word, but made uh, unable to, to procreate. There's a perfect word that I'm just not thinking of that might pop into my head. Um, you need to opt in now, right? You need to always choose to have an abortion. You can, if you are having a baby, you can have your embryo scanned to see that if it has any genetic disorders and you can choose to terminate that pregnancy. Uh, if someone has Down syndrome and you know that from a genetic testing through an amniotic uh, fluid test or uh, another type of um, IVF testing, you can, uh, you can uh, delete all of the embryos that you consider to be uh, not um, the smart, genetically gifted girl that you've always wanted. This has been happening for, happening for 10 or 20 years now. Um, very rich upper west side, upper east side families have been doing this on the DL uh, since IVF was developed. Um, there are so many selective pregnancies. There are so many people who do not have Down syndrome children anymore because they choose not to. Um, I remember growing up in the 70s and 80s and there were, there were in, in the public world, there were Down syndrome actors, there were Down syndrome uh, uh, um, celebrities, there were people on TV and in the media like it was something that was normal, right? It was as normal as is autism now. So be careful about that, right? Be careful about a test that can decide if your child has autism. I don't know if there's a genetic... You know I don't do any research uh, before my uh, recordings, and I'm not anywhere near... Uh, uh, my Echo or my Google Home, so I can't ask that. But uh, let's go even further into eugenics, right? Um, we live in a climate change world. There is so much messaging about the kind of harm that overpopulation could create. In fact, we've been told that white folks uh, need to step aside and allow uh, melanated people to move forward in society. So a beautiful way of giving up uh, your place uh, in uh, university is to decide that you don't want to breed, that you will not have children. There are a thousand things. Um, um, used to be that people in the Catholic Church and in Latter-day Saints and in other faith groups, including Judaism, that, you know, if you found out that one of your children or your son uh, wasn't that into girls, you would um, suggest that maybe he go to the priesthood or become an elder or um, become a, a monk or a sister uh, in the Catholic Church. That was pretty common, right? Uh, and in the world of Judaism... Right? You can, uh, I don't think there's anything, and, and of course, like in those days, uh, being a gay priest was obviously under the table, um, but being a gay priest would really help um, with you not, being a closeted gay priest would certainly help with you not uh, breaking the law when it came to your vow of celibacy, because in those days, celibacy was considered between a man and a woman, right? So, 
there were many ways that uh, people dealt with with uh, with queerness, and that was mostly by either being in the closet or deciding to move to a gay-friendly city like uh, New York City, Los Angeles, or San Francisco. I assume uh, we can include uh, Palm Springs, Miami. Uh, where's that place? It's not Portland, Maine, but it's that other place. Anyway, there's always been safe havens for um, people who are openly gay and queer and um, uh, non-binary and so forth. But they usually did the following. They usually took a bullet for the family, stayed in the closet, and made more babies, right? They might uh, have known since they were six, seven, or eight, but they remained their um, uh, birth gender or the gender assigned to them at birth. And they uh, rigorously, vigorously tried to pass, they would take a compassionate or foolish or uh, just loving wife or maybe decide as a gay man to marry a lesbian woman if there was that much communication or any other type of thing. But you would be giving a, a child to the family and so forth. And this was all uh, pretty much against your will or maybe based on your will, maybe you... Uh, came out later. Like, there's all kinds of scenarios, but but as we move past uh, World War II, and as technologies allowed, and as um, messaging is becoming more and more compliant, and uh, you know, from the sex positivity movement to the anti-slut shaming movement, to the uh, homophobe movement, to the um, to the queer phobic uh, non-binary non phobic to now the transphobic movement uh, to um, other kinds of movements including to the um, MGTOG, Men Go Their Own Way Ming, Ming, MGTOW movement where uh, men are uh, encouraged that women are uh, gold diggers and as a result should not be trusted and um, you know, many of us are going through life um, not having any babies. For me, I'm never going to have children probably because, you know, first of all, um, I just had terrible uh, parental role models. I had a traumatic childhood, which you're not allowed to say if you grew up in Hawaii. Um, I, uh, and, you know, personally, I just, I believed in the whole, like, I'm, um... I'm animal-centric, I'm not human-centric, so, you know, I really don't feel like um, I care that much about uh, furthering the Abraham name or, or having children of my own or having a wife or having that kind of traditional family. I just, as an only child, it just didn't cotton to me. Um, I had, you know, Mark reminded me that I that I can never play the I've never had sex with a woman game because uh, because I bopped around most of the time um, most of the time uh, being a serial monogamist but like there are so many eugenics movements now that are opt-in and while for most of the conversation or the argument with Mark he's like I encourage people to use their agency to make their lives exactly what they want. So, for example, um, he and I agree that if you want to transition and you want to remove your ability to have children, either as a woman with a womb and uh, ovaries and eggs, um, or as a man with uh, scrotum and semen and sperm, and uh, a, a, a erect penis. If you uh, decide you want to do that, and you have your parents' permission, I guess, and you have the money to do it, or the state is willing to do it, you do you. Um, if you want to not have those children biologically with a woman you marry while you're in the closet, and you want to... Uh, come out of the closet when you're eight and you want to live your true life. 
and you know not be and 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 get married to a beautiful man or woman of your same sex and gender or or whatever you do you uh, you can adopt you can um, you can s sperm donate you can have someone carry a baby for you you can have your sperm um, uh, mated with your favorite uh, girl there used to be a term that we used to say for women who hung out with gay men but I can't say either word without being um, uh, uh, homophobe or misogynistic so I will not say either of those things because I have yet to come out as uh, queer so for now as a cisgender uh, straight white man I can't use those words but there's got to be a more acceptable word for um, uh, the, the woman who spends all of her time having the best boyfriend in the world who is her awesome gay buddy, her gay upstairs neighbor. I used to tell women I was dating who had boyfriends to tell their boyfriend that I was just their gay upstairs neighbor. So um, I grew up in Hawaii where being a, a third spirit or third gender uh, or non-binary or gay or actually more like transgender. Transgender or third spirit was perfectly, completely normal in Hawaii Ne. And the term for that, and it's not, it's a descriptive term, it's not a derisive term, at least when I left in 1996, and that's Mahu, M-A-H-U. Uh, so many like Waikiki gay bars, so many like, um, uh, big local men dressed as women, mahu, who might have been trans or might have just been um, cross-dressing or might have just been um, uh, two-spirit, would be up on a Palomino, for example, dressed in the most beautiful Hawaiian gown with beautiful hair and like makeup and a ribbon in the hair and flowers and lays and all that stuff and it's just a glorious thing totally normalized um, but back to force back to nudge people are extremely uh, easy to um, human cultural behavior is extremely contagious and I do not mean to belittle anybody's journey by, by, by talking about things like um, like the fact that uh, teenage suicide tends to contagion into a spate of suicides. Um, a lot of people talk about how when one girl in a classroom of girls uh, in elementary school uh, decides that they want to be a boy, a lot of, or sorry, decides that they are a boy, uh, a lot of other girls in the class uh, become a boy as a contagious thing. One might say that they all want to be boys anyway and that the one girl gave them courage to do so. I believe in that. But as I get older and older and see how my most completely sane genius friends have completely covered their eyes in, uh, in a shark's uh, feeding frenzy membrane and gone completely feeding frenzy over anti-Trump hatred, over the contagion of an idea of, um, of, uh, of civil war, um, an idea that um, the, the, an idea of the threat of gun violence or mass shootings, like they've fallen for everything on both sides. Both sides have fallen for everything, no matter how stupid, no matter how inconsistent, and seeing how people fell for everything, no matter what, and no matter how contradicted, or no matter how people have such a desire to be included, to be part of the posse, to be part of the cool kids table, that whatever that is, whether it be Andrew Tate toxic masculinity, uh, which is happening to a lot of cisgender straight white boys, um, let's be honest, cisgender straight white ugly boys, and um, it's happening to a lot 
of, of, of little boys and little girls who uh, just don't want to be left behind, do not want to be uncool, do not want to miss out on having, in my day, right, having the cool canvas keds or having the cool pog or, um, you know, uh, in my high school, what was cool? When I was in, when I was a cool kid, it was, you know, really cool to be into the Smiths and to be into New Order and to be, like, wasn't that cool to be into the Beatles or to be into Rolling Stones? Like, my nerdy friends were totally into that. It wasn't into be, being into jazz or, or classical music. Like, I loved the song, I loved the piece called Eroica by um, Mozart. But, um, but it was cool, like, amongst the kids to, like, you know, uh, hip-hop, right? And I'll easily say that um, tattoos are a contagion, neck tattoos became a contagion, face tattoos became a contagion. These contagions, these things that are super cool, for example, right now, Doc Martens are super cool, Blundstones are super cool. Um, uh, to totally dress like a goth or a mod or an 80s punk is super cool, even in the Latin American community. Uh, I, I dare say that uh, the eugenics movement is, is surfing uh, trends. It's taking advantage of people. Um, it's, uh, it's encouraging that what, do it, what they are doing is either a sacrifice to a better tomorrow, a sacrifice against Trump, a sacrifice towards equity, a sacrifice based on a thank you to the sacrifice committed by enslaved peoples and oppressed peoples of uh, Norte Americana, a sacrifice on behalf of, of the imperial bloodlusty nature of people, of non-melanated peoples, um, who enslaved people, who killed people, who because the transitive uh, effect uh, are fascists, therefore are Nazis, therefore are literally Hitler, therefore killed seven million Jews. Like there's just, everything now is anti-hashtag tradwife, right? It, everything now is considered to be, everything that we consider to be traditional family, traditional morals, everything that we consider to be godly, are now considered to be very strongly anti-goddess, right? So, um, the FBI is snooping on uh, pre-Vatican II uh, churches that uh, still have um, mass in Latin or uh, any type of... Con while it's perfectly okay, because it's not threatening, it's perfectly okay for uh, black preachers to preach from the pulpit, to uh, recommend Biden, to hate on Trump, uh, while it's fine for um, uh, evangelical, uh, evangelical uh, Korean Christians to uh, be awesome and sculpt their Korean Jesuses, while it's perfectly fine for Catholicism to be um, incredibly, you know, El Señor, gracias Dio, like, adored, um, hallelujah and amen, uh, by people of color, and uh, especially Latin American immigrants, uh, but it, it is a, it is fascistic, and Republican, and Trump, and uh, right-wing Trump, extremist Trump base, to be a person of faith, unless that faith is Islam or Judaism, if you are a modern Christian, even if you are an Episcopalian uh, or Lutheran, uh, you are a possible uh, domestic terrorist. Like this messaging is going to result in people uh, not just uh, male, males going uh, another way, but this is going to result in a lot of people who are going to self, uh, who are going to opt into a, a sui generis eugenics movement, a movement where 
um, uh, based on the transitive theory, people are not going to be viable, uh, viable or able to have children. They're not going to be able to uh, inc uh, uh, reproduce their bloodline. They're not going to be able to make children. Uh, only the rich people will be able to get surrogates. Only the rich people will do um, will do uh, uh, bottle babies. You know, by getting a friend or whatever. The poor will not be able to do it. Poor black trans women will not be able to do it. Um, this will not be something that is going to be fair. Anybody with money can do whatever they want. Any Who knows, right? There might be government money to allow you to get your transition, but will there also be government money to detransition? Sorry, I knocked the, knocked the recorder. This is something you really need to consider. I do not, I, I myself don't have any kids, have never been married, think that, um, be selfish of me. I cannot give them the kind of university they want. I always blow up relationships, so I'm not going to give them probably the long mom and dad uh, married family that they want. I'm sometimes spotty with regards to money, so I do not have multi-generational wealth. I do not have the ability to gift a college degree like my pop-up did to me. I, um, I decided that I'm a man going another way. Not because I resent women or consider them selfish harpies. In fact, I think women are the best people in the world. And in fact, as friends, uh, there's nobody I love more than women. Uh, but once you turn the corner and you become my girlfriend, I think I go mental. I think I become possessive. I think I become traditional. I think that if I find out what you've been with a lot of people, it'll make me sad and weird. I believe that all the cliches of a of a passionate Slavic man with regards to all of those decisions, I believe that I'm jealous, or if I'm not jealous, that's bad. I oh, just so many things. Oh my God, I'm such a mess. I'm such a handful. So I'm happy, uh, and because I'm an only child, and I'm happy with my own uh, shadow, I don't feel. Like, I need to have a relationship only for cuddle time, you know? Um, so, I don't know. Does this make any sense? I believe that there is a eugenics movement. I believe it's very aggressive. I believe that it's targeting uh, uh, anybody you can imagine who will decide not to have children. It's targeting you. Um, be sure that you have true agency or whether you, you are have been the recipient of very sophisticated um, psychology-based neuro-linguistic programming. Find out whether or not you're doing it, uh, whether you're doing it as a martyr or whether you're being duped and fooled. Find out uh, whether or not you... Finally, one thing I, I, did, I forgot to mention that Mark thought was really smart was, is there now, amongst rich people, our Upper West Side mom and dads, our Upper West Side mom and dads, uh, and, and uh, Los Angeles moms and dads, and Austin moms and dads, and San Francisco moms and dads, and Chicago moms and dads, uh, and Miami moms and dads, are all y'all harvesting um, eggs and sperm from your transitioning teenage son and daughter. Do they offer those services? Um, is it considered too young? I believe that a woman's eggs are viable to harvest uh, right after they uh, menstruate. So quite possibly as early as 10 or 11, uh, is there a market to harvest and freeze um, reproductory eggs and sperm for children that have decided to start taking hormone therapy, to start getting upper and lower surgery, to start turning their penises into vaginas and their vaginas into penises, and um, who will be in their decision making, making them mostly unable to have uh, children going forward. 
Uh, is that a thing? I would really like to know. Um, anyway, I've, I've used up so much of your time. I've used up 40 minutes of your time. So I hope you're well, and I hope this isn't too controversial. Like I said, I'm not throwing stones. I mean, if you've met me, you probably think I'm queer already. I'm certainly ally. I'm the ally in the LGBTQIA. Um, I couldn't be more ally if I tried. Um, just, I just don't have, like, I, I actually really like curvy girls. Like, I'm a, I'm a curvy girl kind of guy. Anyway, so, and by girl I mean woman. I mean woman. I like, I like women. But, um, that is all. I wish. I mean, I, I can, I fop around with ladies' hand, with what I like to call, uh, cool satchels, but are in fact ladies' handbags. So, I definitely do not signify 100% man. Uh, just ask any of my friends. I'm pretty floofy. Um. But floofy is, is a, it possibly could be a negative representation for um, people in the LGBTQIA community. So I deep heartedly apologize for making any references to floofiness. I am floofy. That's all I can say is that I am floofy. I don't even know what the definition of floofy is. I used to be foppish, but now I'm just floofy. Um, Before I dig, what they tell you is they tell you if you're digging, if you, if you find yourself in a hole, stop digging. I will end this episode, season five, episode 14, Patorce, um, with I love you, I've always loved you, and I will always love you. Aloha, mahalo, nui loa, ciao, alfita zane, and choosy. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.